before it's put out well by Blair. That was good marking and defensive play. Webb. Small. And Webb getting in there, but it's a Crino to take it away comfortably. And roll it back. Nice play. Good play by Oscar Crino. Now then, in Cantalupo. Mitchell racing down that flank. It's out. Pumping one into space, which is nicely covered. Well, had no chance there. Pete. Good cross, but goalkeeper should have it, but he was in a couple of minds, and that was coming straight out of the lights. Pete, although in normal circumstances that wouldn't be called a decent cross at all, the goalkeeper was in some trouble. And a corner. Again with the ball to be put into the middle by Peak. Deflected away, helped on by Kay. And Banfield humps it back again. Oh, and a miss there by Blair. Wallace couldn't get it. And the powerful figure of Mitchell. And what a run by Patikas here. And it's in for the chance now, for the second. Oh, it should have been in the back of the net there by Clay. That was a straight line break from Mitchell and Patikas and Kay. And it should have been in, John. Yes, fine counter-attack by the Australian team. Uh, something I think we're going to see a lot more of as this game progresses with England pressing and Australia uh, counter-attacking in fine style like they did there. But uh, Paul Kay perhaps should have taken that chance a little bit better. Keep it there, given uh, against uh, Wallace. Oh dear, must be careful here. Uh, no need to be careful, they can go in for the break. We've had just a minute of time added on in this uh, first half. We've had a lot of action, but we've had only one goal. Be watching the Custom Credit Tennis Championships, Australia's prestige indoor tennis tournament. Names such as McEnroe, Connors, Newcomb, Carolitis, McNamara, Tanner and Rosewell are all synonymous with October's Grand Prix television event. In this ninth consecutive year, you'll see the superstars perform on the channel that promotes major Australian tournaments. It's personality tennis at its best, and the action starts next Monday night at 9.30 on Network 10. Stop it off, pumps it up. And Kendall chases that one. And it goes out eventually. But it bobbled rather invitingly across the goal line. And indeed, Australia have got a corner kick. Now, a chance, of course, for Mitchell and Blair to come up here and challenge in the air. And Pete gets it away. Well, John Warren, this is a key time for England now, isn't it? I would think very much so. They've uh, got to uh, start off this second half the way they left the first half, and that was with a growing control of the game. There's Michael Small breaking away well. But well-timed challenge by oh, Crino. And on the other hand, of course, Australia, I, I would assume that Les Scheinfeld was glad to get the boys in at half-time to uh, get them to settle down a little bit. They were losing the grip on the game. It'll be interesting to see now just how, how well they come up after that talk at half-time by Scheinfeld. Webb with the throw. Small. Oh! Had a good return to him. And Greenall has another bite and succeeds only in hitting his man. He's marking tight. 
he couldn't get it. Small coming wide, needs help. He's got a little bit from Finnegan behind him, but Patikas is marking him. Blair with the challenge, Finnegan getting away from Patikas. Patika still with him, and eventually the ball gets over to Colin Greenall. It's too far ahead, and Incantalupo should be able to get away on this one. A chance for Australia to build here. Incantalupo, Mitchell with a good opening here for Australia. Has he taken it too wide? He has. It needed a drive on the left foot. He tried to check back on his right, and the door suddenly closed. But Australia battling well in midfield and making it hard for England to build smoothly. Play on. Now oh, that is a foul. Greenall again penalised. Foul on in Cantalupo. Rostropoulos with the kick. Comes out only to Allen. And Rob. Hopeless one for Wallace. Now Finnegan, who's had a quiet time. Robson does well. But the good interception by Weekly. And he's gone running wide for the throw, which he gets. Trying to drag a few people towards him, and they're not too interested. Now then. Weekly with the win. Mitchell to battle. Mitchell's got the break on Robson here. Can Mitchell pull him back? Nicely stopped there. Mitchell got round young Robson, but only Crosby stopped that one from being a very dangerous cross. And again, they'll pile up at the back with Patikas on the goal line. Kendall holds it, Patikas puts it in, whistle is gone. Kendall obviously fouled there, and there was no real threat to the England goal. He came out to challenge it, three bodies hit him. Patikas rattles it in, but the whistle had gone long before. And there's a chance here for Mitchell to break away. Mitchell's away, it's an obvious foul, and a free kick. Mitchell had certainly got away there. Pure power as the ball was misjudged in the air. He just drove through the middle. That was a bad leap by Banfield. One of the rare misjudgments he's had in this game. And the cross came to fullback and chopped him. So we're back to the free kick situation. We've got a replacement for Australia with this man Hunter on he's wide on the right for the kick the wall's got to get back farther for Askopoulos oh it's a brilliant save it's an absolutely marvellous save terrific effort by the goalkeeper there well driven Excellent piece of work by Kendall. And over the top there by Jim Patikas. No, Kusas it was. He hasn't had a lot to do, Kendall, in this second half, but that was really an excellent save. Now here's Michael Small running into trouble there's nobody out here supporting as Finnegan takes a tumble in the penalty area Raskopoulos keeps it in and goes off Finnegan well the game started with a bit of passion and I think the spectators will, will like a little bit more at the moment Robson 
Allen picks up the bits. Peak. He's got green on the right, but Peak might go from here. Peak shot deflected wide by Wallace. It was a dicey moment for goalkeeper Ahern. I wonder whether that first shot was going in as Peak shot before it hits Wallace. Hard to tell. Wallace leaping here. Two against one. Wallace getting the rebound. He needs help. He's got Oscar! Webb out there. It's England squeezing up here. Greenall. Greenall might try one. Again, the goalkeeper anxious as he goes down there. Is he seeing these late or what? I would think he's seeing them late. I think he had half an eye on the defender and the attacker coming in there. Yes, there's no two ways. Uh, I don't, I've seen uh, keepers tonight take the ball cleanly once from crosses and uh, some of those longer shots, which look simple from here. I think they're having trouble with the lights. And uh, especially Glenn Ahern has reacted late to all these long shots. And one can only sympathise with the goalkeepers here now. Now, Peak, as England looked better, he's looked, trying a lot of these long shots. He really fancies his chances now. Allen, room out there for Greenall. Allen. He's harassed and chased, and Allen is still coming, but he misses out now, and England are short in midfield as Australia break. Kay, Pete did a super job. He's looking better and better in this series. He had a quiet opening game against Cameroon. And Cantalupo is stopped by Webb. England getting a lot of urgency into their game, but Hunter was covering well there. And this is one to chase if Greenall makes a mistake. Did well. Totally on his own now. Hard one for Tony Finnegan. He's got support from behind him, though. He must use him. Crosby's ball forward. But it's Kay to knock it out. And Australia are in a bit of trouble here as Robson goes forward. But good play. And here's Mitchell who could put Australia further ahead. He seemed to take it away from trouble and back into it. But as England pile on a little bit of pressure in midfield, they must be very, very careful what they do at the back. With 15 minutes remaining, it's not good for the national morale back in the old country, but it still would qualify them for the quarterfinals. They must be careful. Oh, and away goes Kusas. That was good play. Kusas getting into the danger area. Just blocked, but Kusas is still in with a chance. Into the arms of Kendall. Perhaps on the second occasion, he was a bit anxious to get a shot in. Throw for England. Allen trying to make it difficult there for Raskopoulos, but he showed strength. Crosby gets out of the way well from Weekly, puts one through the middle that Wallace really can't go for. And Blair is no trouble, but makes a little bit of a dash for it. Quino. Now the pace of the game seems to be raised a little bit by both sides. But Australia bottled up there, play it back. Crosby ball forward. Michael Small knocks it out. But I think that was a foul. Certainly a late challenge. But Small on the ball at the moment has got to get forward. England, if they're short of anything, they're short of height in attack. as Banfield pumps it forward. 
Small looping for it. Webb here challenging, getting it back to Greenall. Webb with a bit of space down the right. Cross in here to Wallace. That's an error. Finnegan, small. And Wallace had a perfect chance here to stop that ball and get a shot in. It wasn't really an opportunity, but it came. And we've already seen him miss it there before the ball is cleared. The opportunity, a good one there. Pete knocks it over. Webb tried to duck and get it over his head, but Trevinic has it. Now it's indeed Cantalugo coming back here. Australia putting it on and then back from midfield. And Wallace trying to get by his man. This is Kay slipping, unfortunately. Robson on the ball and Cantalupo leaning on him. Robson plays safe. Substitution for Australia and Cantalupo comes off. Grant Lee comes on. And 11 against 11 again. There's the throw. And another one to come. So you're putting any money on uh, another goal to be scored, John? Uh, I'm sure our, uh, the Argentinians are hoping that Australia scores again because uh, it's going to mean a toss of the coin. But uh, I would like to think that Australia can, can score and uh, the inclusion now of Lee, who was a very aggressive, very speedy, replacing in Cantalupo, could just lead to that. Uh, just on in Cantalupo, he's had an excellent game. Uh, obviously uh, a lot more confident and grown in stature since his first uh, international match here against Argentina. But Lee can be expected to put some explosiveness into the Australian attack. With 10 minutes of the game left. England certainly getting more possession, but they're leaving far fewer men back. And with Mitchell looking as aggressive as ever, Kusas has had a quiet time, which means he's going to come alive any minute. This could be danger for England. They've got to be very, very careful. Michael Small is running back to try and cover a big hole at the back as Raskopoulos pumps one up. There's Kendall. And as Kufas turns away, the whistle goes. I think the referee here, quite rightly, is giving both goalkeepers a fair amount of protection in these circumstances. Protection and benefit of the doubt. Uh, again, we come back to the lights. It's, I would think it's almost impossible to take the ball cleanly in the air here tonight. Wallace racing for this. Good check there by Blair. But a free kick to England. Crino committing the foul. Australia pulling everyone back. Well, a crowd of 28,000 uh, just over here would be horror-struck if anything came from this uh, free kick from Neil Webb. It might be the odd isolated pom, but not too many on us. Webb takes it. Well away by Robert Wheatley. Greenall back in again. Wallace. Robson. Small. Oh, it's got it. Michael Small has picked up another equaliser. Catch him before he gets out of the stadium. And the big fella, the one big fella they've got up front, catches in. Two players competing for this. After Greenall pumps it intelligently back into the goal mouth. A swing by Wallace, he misses. A swing by Robson, he misses. But Michael Small doesn't. And that's his second goal in two games series of errors there by the Australian team they should have had it away a lot earlier good play though by Greenall, that's a considered ball back in there, he didn't whack it Wallace should have had a clean shot Robson, you can excuse him but Michael Small has really been growing in stature in more ways than one and it's 1-1 one -one. 
That's a significant goal in more ways than one because that means now that if the score remains the same, that England will stay in Sydney to play their quarter-final. Australia will have to travel to Canberra, which has to be a disadvantage for them. And now it's uh, Australia kicking off with just about seven minutes of the game left. That means, of course, that Argentina, as it stands now, have no hope of qualifying. And it means that we might have a problem with two arguments. No, we're not going to have that. And Australia, quite clearly, are going to lift themselves here, chase and harry, and pump some shots in. Oh, they're in a good position here as Raskopoulos tries to get the ball forward. It's wide out here to Hunter. Up for Kendall. And well grabbed as Kushas came in. Bit too near the goalkeeper, really, from Hunter. And now, of course, England can slow the whole business down. Well, they threaten to do something good. Whacked away by Crosby, but we're going to have a free kick. And we've only a little more than five minutes left as the referee checks his watch. Still time for Australia to grab something here. Remember, of course, the memorable fight back against uh, Argentina. Mitchell getting up beaten comfortably by Webb. Allen making Kendall work, but he knew what he was doing. He's shown better in midfield, as indeed have England throughout the second half and the early stages of the first. Webb wins that one. Well, it's an interesting situation that in the two previous games, Australia had been behind and done well to fight back into a winning and then a drawing position in the second match. I wonder if on this occasion they found themselves in the lead and weren't quite used to that situation and slackered off slightly. They certainly have lost their grip in a couple of areas, certainly midfield. But they've still got pretty good support here and marvellous to see a crowd of over 28,000 in a stadium which really doesn't provide first-class facilities for anybody. But still, Australia keep coming. Not now, though, as Finnegan gets by his man. Wallace is on his left. Peak has gone up to the centre. Now that's on, get there, get there. Michael Small to chase that one. Webb looking for the return, didn't get that far. Looked like a little bit top there from Mitchell, but they're on the break now through Lee, and that's very optimistic and over anxious. And a waste. England taking their time with about three minutes left. And one or two players, one or two spectators leaving their seats, making their way quietly home. Because it looks at the moment as if both these two sides have qualified, but it isn't over yet. Hunter getting a boot to that one, and now it's picked up by England in midfield. Trino. trouble at all for Hearn. Bamfield. Come forward for Wallace to leap for, but there's no problems there for Crino. 
Well won by Crosby. It's out. It's scrappy now. Both sides are tired. And there's plenty of room back here. Come on, Rick. Why that fucking whistle? Even more people are leaving now. I think they accept that both sides will be happy to settle for a draw. But if anybody makes an error, they're still both qualified for the quarterfinals. But there'll be a definite group winner. At the moment, England hold that position. Crosby is beaten by that. Fine run out here on the right by Kay. A lot of support from inside him. Needs support from Finnegan, who's just standing there as Banfield gets it away. Well, that's good play. And a round of applause from the Australian supporters here. But still, Hunter keeps going. Back by Phil Crosby. Less than a minute left. Okay, so ball moved out wide to Crosby when he didn't really expect it. After Kusa should have intercepted better. We're coming up now to the 90 minute mark. No Australian is bothering to chase this one. saying I'll have the ball that's it it's all over it ended with a little bit of disappointment for the Australian crowd but satisfaction for both sides overall although England win this group through this draw they win it on goal difference both sides go through to the quarterfinals but England stay here in Sydney Australia have to go to Canberra FIFA World Youth Championship for the Coca-Cola Cup. Hello there. We're about to show you the all-important England versus Australia match that will decide which teams from Group D go into the quarter-finals of the World Youth Soccer Championships. This match is played at the Sydney Sports Ground, which has lighting that is not up to the standard required for television coverage. However, because of the importance of the match and in the interest of the soccer public, Network 10 is going ahead with its coverage despite the tremendous difficulties facing our technical staff. The England side, in fact, is unchanged. The side which drew with Argentina is slowly putting things together, which isn't surprising considering they didn't meet up as a squad until two days before they flew to Australia. And they had to spend a lot of that time fitting suits. They'll be younger and smaller than the Australians, but they are full-time professionals. Neil Webb made a big difference to the side when he was brought into midfield for the game against Australia. He's number 18 there. He's had over 70 first-team games in the English third division. Number two there is Paul Allen. His role in midfield will be a very, very important one. He's played in the first division and he's got cup final experience with the West Ham. Number 17, he might be small, Danny Wallace, but he's very quick and against two big central defenders, that could be interesting. Well, as for the young Socceroos, they've awakened many Australians to the fact that this country has plenty of natural talent in what is the world's most popular game. They're well prepared, they're very fit, they're frightened of no one. They've scored more goals than anyone in this group, but conceded more. So they must, above all, make sure they don't leave the back door open here in their de determination to palm on the palms. Number six, Paul Kay. He's really caught the national line, never stopped running, showed a lot of skill. Jim Patikas, the number 15, he's come into the side. He'll be joining Aberdeen immediately after this particular championship. He's only 17. And number nine, Dave Mitchell, big, strong centre forward there in the British style. This is a golden opportunity for him as we get underway to show that in this department, at least Australian can beat England at their own game. This is going to be a game of considerable passion as Wallace gets forward to young Michael Small. This is uh, Finnegan out there, Wallace. 
The referee in this particular game is a Romanian, is Ion Egna. He's already been in action on this particular field uh, as a linesman. We've got uh, an Italian linesman with the red flag, he's Gianfranco Menigali, and a Polish referee, Aloz Jagos, who has already refereed a game in this particular field. So we've got a, an interesting contrast of styles in some way. We've got an interesting contrast in shapes. Uh, we've got a free kick here. So, John Warren, what do you think is going to be the key issues in this one? And don't be biased. <laughs> well, you have to forgive me for being a little biased tonight. In soccer circles, we've always said that we would have come of age when we could beat uh, England in an international match. And uh, this is an ideal opportunity here tonight. Capacity crowd, uh, very pro-Australian, of course. And the Australian team riding high, uh, one step only from achieving the impossible, and that was to qualify for the quarterfinals. And humping that up, and I'm sure they'll be doing quite a bit of that. And there's Kendall to grab it. It's going to be very difficult for goalkeepers, and indeed the big fellas in this game, when that ball's humped up into these lights, because they're very ordinary indeed. Well won by Blair. Bumped into the middle of Paul Mitchell to Harry, and put out by Banfield. And a corner, won by the Australians as Banfield clears under pressure. These young English players are going to come under great pressure in the first few minutes, with the crowd really in great voice. Now it's the players to look for here, the number four player, number nine, Mitchell. And Kendall holds well. And it will give England a chance to slow it down and in Cantalupo and company time to get back into position. An important save for Kendall there early on. We saw in the early game that the keepers uh, were missing the ball in the air, but Kendall, that was an excellent first up save for him. It's going to give him a lot of confidence for the aerial attack that I'm sure the Australians are going to mount throughout this game. Greenall couldn't get that ball forward. It's a throw in. This is Neil Webb. A bit of a free kick specialist as well. In for Michael Small. And here's Wallace. He's beaten them for speed. It's a chip over to the far post, which Finnegan is battling for. It's out. That was a good burst, though. There was a shirt pull there as he tried to get by, but he's got real pace, this young London-born but Southampton player. And the danger man, I would think, for the Australian defence. Crino takes the goal kicks. What's wrong with the hand? Doesn't he take the kicks? You're having a shot at me already, eh? Not at all, but you wouldn't give me any odds on the bet. Not even the draw either. But of course, either of these sides could lose by one goal and still qualify, but they're not approaching that game like this at all. And here's Michael Small getting into the area, and it's off. Good run by Small, though. The big, tall, black player through the middle. There he is. No experience of first-team football in England. Lee, um, Mitchell rather leaping there, being fouled by Robson. The Romanian referee standing no nonsense early on. Now let's see what we've got here. We've got Crino and Raskopoulos. And K behind them. Here's Raskopoulos. The drive, oh, he rattled it against the bar. Raskopoulos, desperately unlucky, he gets a shoulder in there as England get it away in some urgency and despair. Good challenge there, though, by Pete. And cleared into touch by the man brought up in rugby league circles, uh, Glenn O'Hearn. That was a marvellous free kick by Peter Raskopoulos, and the goalkeeper in these lights didn't see it. Fine strike with the ball, Raskopoulos, and uh, he has, has a tremendous shot, and he's got to use a lot more as evidence there. Here's Lee. He's uh, small, he should have got it. Blair denied in the end, but it was a good run, and a foul on Robson. Hey! 
both sides playing a 4-4-2 formation so there's a big competition in midfield Robson's kick Small couldn't get it Wallace is chasing a lost cause and a throw in to Australia Crino coming over for it and another Quino once more. Cruz has to chase this, but that's put away by Phil Crosby, the number six there. Playing four at the back. Good support from this Sydney Sports Ground crowd here. And a free kick, is it? Uh, the flag went up. The ball was pushed along that touchline. Oh, there's a bad foul by Colin Greenall, and the play is allowed to go on because Australia are in possession in a good position. Kusas, a good turn. Kusas, a good goal! Mark Kusas! Goalkeeper left his near post unprotected. That's a lovely turn by the Australian's leading scorer. This fellow's really got a touch for the goal here. A beautiful turn, leaves Banfield for dead, and a wonderful drive. An early goal for Australia. A terrific boost from Mark Kusas after Incantalupo was fouled, but the referee sensibly allowing play to go on. Good refereeing there, John. Yes, good refereeing, but fantastic skills from Mark Kusas. A really world-class goal, and that's got the Australians really going now. An ideal time to get a goal. And uh, after only seven minutes, one up. And uh, well done, Mark Kusas. Kusas, of course, has already scored three goals in this competition before. This is his fourth. And although that was superb play by him, good refereeing, it looked as if Mark Kendall left a little bit of a gap on that near post. Now, England must really watch their step. They must regroup and keep it tight. As it stands at the moment, they could still qualify on this score, but if it goes worse than this, if they lose by two goals, then they're in trouble. So a perfect start for this Australian side. Wallace tries to chase them away. That's not a good clearance at all. Webb tries to keep it in. But the linesman's flag snapped up. And a throw in. Greeno quickly takes it. Trodenic over Greenall's head. Gets it. But it's in Candelupo. Mitchell gets forward. Candelupo trying to get one over. Fatikas. Ooh, that was a nice little touch. Small in there battling. That's a foul and a free kick to Australia. Quickly taken, they're very snappy. They're making England run. Blocked as Kay went in by Greenall. England must hold on here, otherwise they could be out of this competition. Good play by Webb. Small to Allen. No, but before he could get the ball forward, he was harried. And Raskopoulos gets the ball to Crino. Here's Robson running for. That was a blatant foul. And the referee, or with a thought, should have spoken to the player there. But now it's Crino looking for Wallace and he's so much shorter than the Australian player Webb couldn't get it in Candelupo he's got two or three players running for him he's got an alternative Kay being one of them Crino being the other well, Australia making a bit of a meal of this one and Webb doing a good job here throw into Australia though
for Dinic. Down the line. Kusas. In Cantalupa. And the corner. Which again will give the big Australians a chance to get that ball in the air. Up comes Steve Blair. Problems now for Kendall and the English defence. Patikas is on the goal line. Got big guys running from the back. Off the near post. Still not clear though. Alan turning and getting away and being fouled. And Alan is being booked here. And that, I think, was a strange decision. Alan, the England captain, despair there. It's his second booking of the competition. If they get through, he'll miss the game. He's quite clearly fouled by Kay. Now, we don't see, unfortunately, as the ball rolls away, as he gets up, somebody else has a go, he has a go at them, and the referee sees that, and he's booked. Well, I would have thought there were, that was slightly unfortunate for the England captain, but he's now going to pick himself up, drive his side forward, because they're struggling. Well, here's a corner for England. Inevitably... Webb, the number 18, and Robson, the number 14, as well as number 16, small of the danger men. It's going to be taken by Tony Finnegan. They're beginning to make their runs. They're checking back. Well clear. But it's Crosby getting in here. Oh, they're challenging really hard as Crosby battles with Wheatley. And it's a throw to England. Small leaving it. Come on, Peter! Peak. Good turn. What can he do with the cross? He can't. Bruno gets it away comfortably. Banfield. He needs help here. Doesn't get it. And play it back. Got to cool the game down for a bit. Small battling there. Hump forward by Banfield. No real chance of Wallace getting out against these big Australians. And there's a free kick to Australia. High kicking. Trudinic leaves it and goes to the left. Kay is already there, but it goes wide to the other side to Robert Wheatley. And back to Glenohan. Good leap by Crosby. And Australia powering forward as Banfield pumps that away. Raskopoulos looking built like a tank and giving a fair imitation of one. Not much of England in midfield yet, John. No, it's very much Australia, uh, I think really thanks to the form of West at the moment. He's uh, in fine touch tonight and uh, a key player for Australia. And uh, I think he's the dominant force in this whole match at the moment. Well, what a boost that early goal was from Mark Kusas. Uh, push there on the hook. Uh, corner given there. You probably see the wall paint underneath the Australian's eyes. Of course, that is for the glare of these lights. Painted up like the rugby league players. Of course, uh, small there, brought back in defence and badly needed as. K shapes up for this Australian corner. 
we've got uh, Patikas on the goal line. We've got Blair at the back of the box and Kusas there too. Well held by goalkeeper Mark Kendall. Rolls it out fast. Wallace turns it up. Ah, oh, that's a bad one for Allen. The uh, flag stays down as Greenall covers. Quick throw. So the score just after 15 minutes is England nil, Australia 1, Mark Kusas the scorer and Australia looking the better side but a good battle in midfield at the moment. Free kick to England. Webb and Small up for the big ball four but it was Wallace coming. He's got to control well and the man marking him tight it's so difficult. Allen. Banfield forward for the Humpty and there's Wallace chasing it almost there Wheatley Allen gets it away Rastropoulos looking for the quick throw the back pass to the goalkeeper looked as if it was on but because of the good running by Kusas it suddenly disappeared, and that was why I had to panic it away. Some goes on Cantalupo. Free kick to Australia. Steve Blair is on his way up uh, the back of the box. Blair coming to the front, Mitchell's right at the back. Blair gets up. Oh, it's a good header. Mitchell couldn't quite get onto the ball. Good leap by Steve Blair. He's still moving as the kick is taken. He moves onto it, leaps, but just deflects it under pressure from our defender. Wide. One for Michael Small to chase. Does well, but it's gone out. Off the field of play before Michael Small controlled it. So that's a throw to Australia. Stopoulos being harried. Oh, they're really battling for the ball here. Finnegan and Small, and it's a giveaway. England coming into it slowly in midfield. Wallace chasing this one. Picked up by Peake. A drive from a very awkward position. You might remember, though, that Andy Peake scored the goal of the season when he was a very young player for Leicester against Liverpool when he drove one in with his right foot, I might say, from a similar distance. Yes, yeah, probably the first signs of England yeah. getting a grip on the game here uh, after 15 minutes. In the previous two matches, Michael Small just having a go at him. Sorry, Johnny. Sorry, yes. In the previous two matches, even though they were under, under pressure, they still had the control of the situation and uh, the early goal and the crowd support and the aggressive nature of the Australians opening has had them on the defensive end and without control of the game. But they're just signs slipping into the game now that they're starting to... Kusas and Mitchell! And as we say that, of course, Mitchell misses a great opportunity. Well, that's the counter-attack in perfect demonstration. Kusas to Mitchell, that was a good opportunity. He fluffed it, really. He was off balance and scooped it over the top. And Mitchell could have put... Australia so far ahead on this one. Board come England, but only half-heartedly. That was a good challenge. The ball is flying around a bit but it's uh, Australia in possession out there. Peter's coming more into the game. 
Good stop though by Robson. Peak, small, supporting on the right is Webb. No foul and comfortably back to the goalkeeper ahead. There's a little bit more room in midfield for England, but Australia chasing as hard as ever. In Candelupo chases, Banfield can't keep it in. That swerved out. Banfield the sweeper alongside number 14, uh, Robson. Trudenic. Kusas has backed off into the area. Trudenic. Can he get down the line? Trudinic still with a chance of getting a cross in. Oh, that's a beautiful cross, and up goes Kendall. Oh, the lights were a great problem to the goalkeeper there. So too was the very, very physical challenge of Mitchell, and Kendall is in, trouble, in some trouble. Well, a lot of credit there to Howard Trudinic, the left fullback, who did a superb job getting that cross over. A look at the challenge as the goalkeeper goes up and those lights remember are impossible for the goalkeeper to see at the moment the walking wounded mark kendall on his feet and a good kick taken good leap by small finnegan over the challenge small battling forward peak evading one challenge but can't control the ball And Australia in control at the back at the moment. Kay out nicely. What a fine ball. In Cantalupo as Greenall comes to him. Mitchell is running to try and close things down on Banfield. Mitchell doing a good job, but so did Banfield, who was well in control. Still limping the goalkeeper. So here's Kendall taking his time. to peak and Wallace is looking for that one but the goalkeeper ahead that wasn't an easy ball at all does the job very well indeed that was a difficult one he couldn't afford to let that bounce but so far he hasn't really been tested nicely picked up away goes Kusas oh they really put the pressure on them Put out by the youngest player in the tournament, Stuart Robson. So a possible long throw here from Raskopoulos. Lee leaps, and it's Kendall's ball. A lot of the passion at the moment going out of the Australian game, but they're still dangerous on the counter-attack. Flicked on by Peak and he was clobbered too. Robson, peak leaping, picked up by Allen. Webb's gone down the right hand side. He sets it up for Greenor here. Good challenge here by Crino. He's gone forward, but the ball isn't controlled by Cantalupo. Crino did a good defensive job there on Wallace. They pick up again now. Tight marking. Hall knocks it back to Greenock. Small tries one. Finnegan might be able to turn here. Markings tight. Finnegan. A drive. And again finds Peak wide out there is Webb. He hooks it the other way. Webb was free on the right hand side. Allen picks it up. And England not enjoying but uh, gaining quite a bit of possession in midfield. But so many Australians back there. They do everything in numbers and totally correctly too. And now we've got a break on that right hand side. Trying to get Patikas into the game. Forward for Webb. Allen laying it off fast to Greenall.
And here's Allen going forward in the striking position. And Small looking for support. He finds it from Greenall. Not a good ball, but Pig puts a squeeze on him. It's in for Webb. Can he pull a decent cross back? There's Robson, the number 14, waiting to start a run in. We've already got Webb on the goal line. And moving camera cables and one or two other things as Pig takes the kick. It's well one there by Blair, and it comes out to Allen. Checks it back into space, but only for Mitchell to burst down that right hand side. It's stopped by Crosby. Allen had fought there, but against this fella pounding up on you, it's not surprising that Australia win the ball a lot in these 50 50 situations. Raskopoulos. I think he's trying to get it in. Matika's batting again there. He's had a fairly quiet time so far. Prino. Crosby, good control. There's a foot up there from Crino. And that's a foul and a quickly taken free kick to Wallace. He's trying to turn away from Blair, who's seen it well, and puts it out. Well, we knew the Australians were pretty good uh, in the air, but they've shown some ability on the ground at the back there too, John. Yes, and playing with a lot more confidence. I think uh, the two games have played so far have given that uh, additional confidence to Pete and Wallace to enable them to express their skills to the fullest. Robson getting one in, small, can't...